Good morning, and welcome to Our Lady of the Lakes. Our celebrant this morning is our pastor, Father Jerry. We will now begin the liturgy for the second Sunday of Advent. Our opening hymn is number 444, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to all gathered here in church and those watching on the internet. And we got an exciting day because we have a baby to be baptized. So that's awesome. Let's begin with our baptism. The Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. May God's grace, peace, and love be with you all. And as we come the second week of Advent, we're going to hear John the Baptist talking about repenting. Admit your sins and Trust in God's forgiveness. That's what we do every time we come to church. Lord Jesus, Son of the Father, begotten on high, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, Son of David, Jesse's root, Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, Son of Mary, Son of man, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Good job. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Let's hear God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people says your Lord, says God. Speak tender, tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all of her sins. A voice cries out, in the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto the high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news, fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, 
his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them to his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to recompense. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be? Conducting yourself in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elephants melted in fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, and he will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed, one mightier than I is coming after me. And I'm not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Daryl Davis is known as an African-American blues musician who has an interesting hobby. He collects Ku Klux Klan robes. It all started years ago, and right now he's got about over 200 of them. And here's the story. He said, he said he got his first robe over 40 years ago while playing in a bar in Frederick, Maryland. After he'd finished playing a song, a white man approached him. He said, I really enjoyed your music. You know, this is the first time I've ever heard a black man play the piano like Jerry Lee Lewis. Davis thanked him and then asked, where do you think Jerry Lee Lewis learned how to play that kind of style of music? And then the musician, Daryl Davis, explained the roots of rock and roll in the blues tradition that the rockability style he liked was not invented by Jerry Lee Lewis, but by black musicians like Fats Domino and Little Richard. Well, the two of them talked for a while, and the conversation went on, and the man says, you know, this is the first time I've ever sat down and had a drink with a black man. And then he said he was a member of the Ku Klux Klan. Davis laughed at first, but then when the guy pulled out his card, saying that he was a KKK member, he stopped laughing immediately. But the man was very friendly and asked Davis to call him the next time he played at the bar. Now the fact that a Klansman and a black person could sit down at the same table and enjoy the same music, there was a seed planted. And Davis recalls, so what do you do when you plant a seed? You nourish it. Davis decided to go around the country and meet and talk to as many Klan members as he could. Music was always the first way to, to that they could meet. Davis studied everything he could about the KKK. That helped him sit down and talk with everyone of the KKK he met. One of the opening questions after they got going was, how can you hate me when you don't even know me? If you spend five minutes with your worst enemy, it doesn't have to be about race. It, it could be about anything. You will find that both have something in common. And as you build upon these common things, you are forming a relationship. And as you build upon that relationship, you're forming friendship. That's what could happen. I didn't convert anybody. They saw the light and converted themselves. When true friendship blossoms, the Klansmen realize that their hate may be misguided. When they renounce their membership, Davis collects their robes and keeps them in his home as a reminder of the dent, the dent he has made in racism by simply sitting down and having dinner with people. The point of that story is Daryl Davis 
is the prophet in the spirit of John the Baptism. In baptism, each one of us has been called by God to do the work of the prophet. That's what this little girl, what we're going to baptize today, is going to share in. Using whatever talents and skills that we have to transform the wastelands around us into harvest of justice and forgiveness. Years ago, when I was a pastor in Tomahawk, there was a group of pastors we'd get together for a study every week. And there was a small little church that, uh, very fundamentalist, and he joined that. And all of a sudden, we got talking about stuff. And of course, they got to talk about the Catholic stuff. And they talk about us worshiping Mary. And I said, no, we don't worship Mary. I said, Mary's the mother of Jesus. We honor her. We ask her to pray for us. Then she said, well, well you guys go to church. You know, you, you kill Jesus all over again at Mass. And I said, no, Jesus died for our sins once and for all. What we do at Mass is share in what he did once and for all for us. And so it went on and on and on. Long story short is that over time we became good friends, all because we took the time to sit down and realize we have more in common than separates us. John the Baptist was tired of the way things were going and decided to do something and did. He said he'd change people's hearts. When we find ourselves in places of loneliness, anger, hurt, bitterness, or fear, and in the deserts, if we listen to our hearts, we can maybe hear the, one, the voices of one crying out, hope and possibility to us. See, the reality is John the Baptist was sent to the people of those times. God sends people to us. Maybe it's in the guise of a loving and supportive spouse, a wise, generous family member or friend, and we hear the message of the John the Baptizer. In the book, The Power Within You, Pat Williams of the Philadelphia 76ers tells a remarkable story. Back in 1980, it was a hot Sunday afternoon, and there was a young cerebral palsy person named Cordell Brown making his way through the clubhouse of the then world champion Philadelphia Phillies. Cordell walks with great difficulty. He talks with great difficulty. He eats with great difficulty. When people see Cordell coming, they usually turn, walk the other way, or simply ignore him because they don't know what to do. In fact, as Cordell made his way through the clubhouse, uh, many of the players were thinking to themselves, well, what's Cordell doing in the Phillies clubhouse? He was there because he had been invited to speak to the players in a pregame chapel service. What could this guy possibly say to people of then stars back then, Steve Carlton and Mike Schmidt, who are far removed from his world of pain and deformity. Some of the players were saying the same thing, but they sat down to listen. So here Cordell launches into his, his spiel. He begins by putting the players at ease. He said, I know. I'm different. Then quoting 1 Corinthians 15, 10, he added, but by God's grace, I am what I am. And for the next 20 minutes, Cordell talked about the goodness of God in his life. He concluded by ans answering the question, what could he say to famous superstars like Steve Carton, Mike Schmidt, who were so far removed from his world of pain and deformity, he said this, you may hit 350 for a lifetime and be paid millions of dollars a year, but when the day comes when they close the lid on that box, you won't be any different than I. That's one time we'll all be the same. I don't need what you have in your life but one thing's for sure you need what i have that's jesus christ he got it right he got it right hope enables us to transcend time when we deal with difficult thing hope is no matter 
what is going on right now in this country, in the world, in our, in our lives, God will get us through it. And that's true. Years ago, a newly ordained white minister was sent to be the pastor of a black congregation. And the people were cordial, but not really overwhelming. Then the minister married a woman by the name of Esther. And all of a sudden, attendance at church went up. And so the pastor was really curious, so he talked to one of the elders and simply said, you know, I'm puzzled why all we have more people coming to church. And he says, I don't think my preaching has improved that much. And the elder says, basically, no, it hasn't. But I said, what's the difference? And the elder says, it's because you married Esther. And Esther comes to church. And that made all the difference. And the pastor says, well, other pastors had wives. And the elder looked at him and says, yes. And their wives went to white churches for communion. Your wife stays with us and has communion with us. All we have to do is what we have to do, and we can make incredible changes. The first three words I read today in, in the gospel was the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ according the, to Mark. And it goes on for 16 chapters. But it doesn't end there. After those cha 10, 16 chapters, we take over. And what we do is preach the gospel however we can do that. And each of us has been entrusted by God to do exactly that. Now today we're going to have our little girl baptized right now. And she's going to share in the ministry that all of us that have been baptized. So parents and godparents, if you come forward and stand up on the step behind the table. So we have Amelia Grace in dad's arms, and that's Garrett holding him, and Becca next. And Anna Marie is a godmother, and also uh, Logan. And I've been assured they are, have been godparents before, so they're trained professionals. <laughs> so now let us ask the Lord what we need this day. For the church, for its leaders and all its people, that they be positive examples to follow. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who live in places of war, and oppression, especially the Middle East, Ukraine, and other countries, and for the release of the hostages, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of law enforcement, first responders, and those serving us in the military, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For professional athletes, coaches, and others who are people to follow, that they understand their role and be a good example that others might emulate. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those to say they are followers of Jesus, that we understand the difficulties of leadership for our Diocese of Superior, moving forward from maintenance to apostolic mission, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the deceased, may they come to know the joy of, of fullness of life in Christ, especially victims of mass shootings, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Peter Novak, remembered at this Mass, we pray. Lord, hear. For the prayer requests written in the bulletin and in the prayer request book at the entry of the church and those written on our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For this baby, Amelia Grace, soon to be baptized, that she and her parents have a wonderful life living as Christians, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Well, God, you have heard the needs of this family of faith this day. Grant what we ask, ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, parents and godparents, through the sacrament of baptism, 
the child you have presented is about to receive from the love of God, new life by water and the Holy Spirit. For your part, you must strive to bring her up in the faith so that this divine life may be preserved from the contagion of sin and may grow in her day by day. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, then mindful of your own baptisms, renounce sin, profess faith in Christ Jesus and the faith of the church in which children are baptized. And so all of us have an opportunity now to renew the vows of our own baptism. Please respond, I do, to each of these questions. Do you renounce Satan? I do. In all his works? I do. In all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. And do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith, the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Parents, is it your will, therefore, that a Amelia Grace should be baptized into the faith of the church, which we have all professed with you. Please put her head over there. I'm going to get over here. Amelia Grace, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> hey, I did it, girl. I'm going to Wipe her off there. You want to take that candle and light it off the one over there? So now we have um, anointing after baptism. I mean, uh, obviously, uh, this is the prefigures when she's going to be confirmed, but it's a sacred chrism. It's the same chrism we use in... in uh, Confirmation, same chrism was used when I was ordained. So we're going to put a little bit on her head here. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin, given you new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and joined you to his holy people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation, as Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king. So may you remember, remain a member of his body until everlasting life. Amen. Now she's got a beautiful little white garment. We're going to give you a little token one. You can lay that just in front of her. But it's the idea that we put on Christ. So Amelia Grace, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. May this white garment be a sign of your Christian dignity with family and friends to help you by word and example. Bring it unstained into everlasting life. Amen. And then if you want to hand the candle to mom there. Receive the light of Christ. Parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly so that you, your child, enlightened by Christ, may walk always as a child of the light and persevering in faith may run to meet the Lord when he comes when all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. And Lord Jesus, made the deaf hear and mute to speak, grant that he may soon receive his word with your ears and profess the faith with your lips to the glory and praise of God the Father. Amen. So let's welcome the newest member of the community. You can blow out the candle and we'll uh, let you go back to your places and we continue with our gift song. Our offertory hymn is number 454, My Soul in Stillness Waits. <clears throat> and 
Bless thee, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have bread to offer, which earth is given, human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Bless and bless thee, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray now that our gifts of bread and wine, our tithes and offerings, be acceptable to God. O Lord, be pleased with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our, own, our cause, come to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. This we pray through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the loneliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is made uh, known, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels, archangels, with thrones, dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we sing. font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you in need of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, with James, our Bishop, and all baptized believers. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, especially for victims of war and gun violence within our own country. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her holy spouse, Saint Joseph, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We rise to join our voices to pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from useless anxiety, as we wait with hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, where the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of our Lord be with you always. Your Greet the people right around you with some sign of Christ's peace.
For a guest, if you need a gluten-free host, come to my station and request it. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 1006, Taste and See.
In announcements, we do have fellowship in the parish hall. Everybody's welcome to go back, have coffee, and whatever kind of goodies are back there. Please note, we have extreme faith camp. We have three different sessions in the Diocese of Superior. This is a week-long Monday through Friday experience for our youth, sixth grade and older. We also need chaperones. I call it boot camp for Catholics. They have a one heck of a lot of fun, do all kinds of activity, rock climbing, the whole nine yards, but they also have mass every day, confessions, adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. Kids or youth that have gone that, they're excited about their faith. That's the goal. If you have questions or know somebody or want to support it, just uh, contact the church office here. We need help the day after Christmas. We're moving the food pantry from the current location in Centuria to a restaurant we bought, we, the uh, three different churches uh, and others on Highway uh, 35. So if you can help the day after Christmas, that'd be great. We still have a little few little blue books for Advent in the back. Next Sunday after Mass, there's going to be a bake sale by the confirmation class to support our sister church in West Yellowstone that struggles to stay open and warm during the winter months. And so that'll be happening, and they'll give a little update on that at the end of Mass. If you want to sign up for Christmas Ministries in the back on the podium, that would be great. A lot of people are out of town or not here, but if you can fill in, that'd be awesome. Tonight, Living Nativity, Joy Lutheran at 5 p.m. We do it every other year. So last year it was here, it's over there. And we have confessions every Sunday, 7.45, 8.15, on Thursday during Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. So visitors, we've got a lot of them. Thank you for coming. I know a lot of them for the baptism. I appreciate your coming. But also if you're visiting uh, in church or online and looking for a home, consider a Lady of the Lakes. We'd be glad to have you. So I hope you have a blessed rest of this week as we continue to pray for peace in a very troubled world and including within our own streets. Uh, really sad, very heavy, but we're in the right place because somehow God's going to get us through this. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly ask you, Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth, to hold firm the things of heaven. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sending forth hymn is number 447, People Look East. People look east, the time is near of the crowning of the year. Make your hearts fair as you are able. Trim the hearth and set the table. People look east and sing today. Love the guest is on the way. Furrows be glad. 